Hey everyone, I'm going to jump on here in this quick video and discuss some of the new games that have been announced over the Game Awards that recently took place. I want to cover some of the games that are sort of relevant to the channel itself because I think there were quite a lot of interesting announcements and some interesting omissions as well which we will discuss. I mean, most of you guys have probably already seen this. Uh, but I wanted to get on here and give my two cents as well because it's what I do. I'm a YouTuber, you know. Uh, again, I'm going to cover the games which I feel are relevant to me personally and to the channel itself. I'm not going to talk about everything because, of course, a lot of stuff was announced, but I think it's worth covering some of the games coming out next year because it's looking like a full year next year. Obviously, I honestly don't expect like some of these games to be released. I feel like there are going to be things that will be pushed back into 2024 because there always are, you know, there always are delays and other stuff. And honestly, looking at this lineup, I think some of these games are going to be trash, uh, which we'll talk about, which we'll talk about. Uh, but yeah, this is, I'm just going to go through the games. I'm going to leave like the chapters in the description. If you just want to hear my thoughts about a particular thing, you can skip to that. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the most significant reveal, which is the new Armored Core, Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. This is looking actually very interesting. I've been saying for years and years that FromSoft need to make a new Armored Core game. I've played Armored Core 5, which was, it was good. I mean, it's very, very complicated. And I was play, like playing a bunch of other stuff at the time when I got Armored Core 5. And I didn't really dive into it. I kind of gave up because again, the game is just so overwhelmingly complex. And I honestly kind of hope that Armored Core 6 will stick to that with all of the added knowledge that FromSoft have gathered by making the Soul series. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that Armored Core is even more cryptic than the most cryptic Souls games, at least from what I've heard and the little bit I've played. So I think it will be very important that they implement some of the stuff in terms of like tutorial design they learned from actual Souls games and implement those into Armored Core because I think that's going to be crucial. If people are not able to understand the game, they're going to be giving up very quickly, especially since a lot of Armored Core does rely on menu diving and sort of changing settings and all that. So one thing I'm hoping for, again, I'm really hoping it sticks to the Armored Core formula. What I really, really don't want, and I think some of the information, the additional information that has come out since the trailer uh, does point to FromSoft knowing this as well. What, what I really don't want is a Souls game with mechs. I don't want Armored Core 6 to be like, again, a Souls game, just you're in a giant robot, because I think that really takes away from the unique identity of the series. And again, it really seems like FromSoft is not going for that and are instead going to be keeping the core Armored Core gameplay. Because I think the story I'm kind of already concerned about, the thing is that the trailer felt extremely soulsy. Like the whole thing with the fire and the ashen world and all of that. And again, one of my biggest initial fears and the thing that jumped out at me immediately is, oh shit, they're just gonna be making Dark Souls 3 or Elden Ring with robots. Um, and I'm really, really hoping they don't just do that. And I'm talking about the story here as well, uh, because, you know, one of the things that I've always, well, not always, but I've sort of criticized FromSoft for a bit now, is that they've pretty much had the same exact story in all of their games since Dark Souls 1. So it would be really like not the best if Armored Core comes out and it has the exact same story just with robots. Um, so again, really, really looking forward to this because I wanted an Armored Core game for a long time. And again, I trust FromSoft to deliver. I think the guy that um, directed Sekiro is directing this game, which has me really hopeful because as you guys know, Sekiro is one of my favorites. Uh, it has recently really climbed up in my view. And I think 
if that's the hands the Armor Core game is in, we are in good hands. Trailer looked good, by the way. Uh, obviously, it was pretty much pre-rendered, so we didn't get much gameplay. Um, but yeah, FromSoft really know how to make cinematics now, and I do wonder sort of what the budget is going to be behind this game, because obviously an Armored Core game does not have the the sort of audience that um, Elden Ring has. I mean, Elden Ring had a head start because it was a huge game, but Dark Souls 3 was already insanely popular. And I think a lot of people just sort of filtered over. And it will be interesting how many people will filter over to Armored Core, especially since, again, it's kind of its own thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm like looking forward to it. And hopefully it'll actually be playable. I mean, in a sense that uh, you will, it will actually be possible to understand what the hell you're meant to do. So yeah, really interesting. Coming next year, uh, they said 2023, didn't really point to any specific date, but knowing FromSoft, FromSoft always releases their games around like either June, not June, sorry, what am I talking about? Either like April-ish or like the September type deal. Uh, so we'll see which one we get. Yeah, that's Armored Core 6. I can't, I can't believe it's actually happening. Like, that is actually crazy to me. Um, because I've been saying it for so long. And it's like, it's like the Bloodborne 2 or Sekiro 2 thing. Where it's like, you say it, but you never actually believe it's going to happen. So now, yeah, who knows? Maybe those games will actually happen. <clears throat> I kind of want a Bloodborne 2, please. Yeah, FromSoft, can you please get on a Bloodborne 2? Thanks. All right, the next one, the next big sort of Souls adjacent thing uh, that was announced is, well, not announced, but shown more, is the Jedi Survivors trailer. Actually releasing in March, March 17th, which is not that far away. Uh, you guys know I've talked about it before when I did the Souls tier list, but I actually really like uh, the first game. And I think Jedi Survivor is looking to be basically an improvement. Obviously, this is a AAA game, like a legit AAA game, but I think it's one of the better AAA games in recent memory. And honestly, it's one of the better sort of actual like things coming out of the Star Wars IP in a long time. That's not like the first few seasons of The Mandalorian or Andor. Man, are they butchering that franchise. Disney, what the fuck are you doing, honestly? Uh, but the game itself is really good. Uh, and the story of it is really good. I think Cal Kestis is a very interesting character, one of the more compelling ones. And again, Jedi Survivors is looking solid. I mean, you guys know, this is basically Souls Light, baby's first Souls game. Uh, it borrows a lot from the Souls franchise gameplay-wise, which I think makes sense. Um, I think if they were smart, if I had to like wish for something, I think a real like Star Wars Jedi game would copy Sekiro's combat system, because I think that would be like the sick thing. Like lightsaber combat with Sekiro sort of deflecting and all that would be an absolute dream. Obviously, they're not going to do that because Sekiro is an incredibly hard game. And uh, Jedi Survivors probably will not be an incredibly hard game. I mean, the first game was very, very easy, even on the, the higher difficulties. But it was fun. And that's the most important thing, uh, that a Star Wars, Star Wars game should be fun, I think. And this game delivered. So yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to this one. Uh, March 17th, that's very, very close. So we'll see what they deliver on. I have high hopes because... Again, I feel like Star Wars gameplay-wise has actually been doing slightly better than movie and show-wise. And to cover the final sort of Souls-like that has received coverage, we are going to be talking about the Lords of the Fallen. This is like Lords of the Fallen rebooted and the trailer was kind of sick. Uh, not gonna lie, it drew me in, but you kind of have to remember that even back in 2016, the trailer for the first Lords of the Fallen was sick as well, and people got hyped, really, and the game came out and it was a pile of dog shit. 
like honestly i've played lords of the fallen uh, I've tried playing it several times. I never actually managed to stick around for an entire playthrough because the game is just so incredibly clunky. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not really hopeful for this thing, this new Lords of the Fallen. I feel like if there was one thing that really should have been just left in the cupboard and not brought out, it's Lords of the Fallen. I know they're doing the reboot, but I really have a slight suspicion that this IP is slightly tainted because people always associate with this game with it being the first sort of, oh yeah, we're making a new Souls, it's going to be like AAA and all that, and the game was a massive disappointment. Hey, listen, I hope to be proven wrong. That's all I can say. I'm never above being proven wrong. It's happened many a times, but honestly, looking at it... Uh, I mean, it's, it was like a very pre-rendered trailer. You guys, you know this thing they do now? Like IGN on all the big gaming sites where they say like, oh, it's the first gameplay trailer. And you look at that shit and it's like a three minute pre-rendered trailer with like three or four seconds of gameplay, which looks pre-rendered as well, by the way, spliced in there. I absolutely hate that. A gameplay reveal should be like some fool sitting down with a controller and at least playing like five, six minutes of the game. That's a gameplay reveal. If you're showing a pre-rendered trailer and you cut in some like, I don't know, second of the bald guy from Lords of the Fallen dodging an attack, that's not gameplay reveal in my view. But whatever, obviously things have changed. Um, yeah, it's looking like exactly the same thing as the first Lords of the Fallen, if we're gonna go by that. And the issue with Lords of the Fallen was that it was just very, very clunky. I mean, the characters looked like World of Warcraft characters. They had that like big shoulder design. And man, did the gameplay play that way as well. It's just, I think the best way to describe the first Lords of the Fallen is big shoulders. And this was the thing for a long time with games that tried copying the Souls formula, where they were like, oh, we're going to have weighty combat. That was like, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen the phrase weighty combat. And weighty combat is just trash most of the time. Uh, nobody can really nail down weighty combat. And Lords of the Fallen didn't either. But hey, again, the design is looking better. I mean, that, that monster they showed at the end kind of cool, a little bit bloodborne -y almost, so I'm always hoping the game will deliver and it will be good and uh, all that, but this is definitely not one I'm pre-ordering. I'm going to let people take a stab at it and see what happens because I feel like the potential for disappointment is there, uh, so we'll, we'll see ha what happens on that front. Speaking of the opposite of disappointment, I think Returnal was announced for PC, which is very cool. I mean, obviously it was PlayStation exclusive, PS5 exclusive, which did lock it out for a lot of people. But I always support uh, having like people access a good game and Returnal is a good game. So I'm actually playing through it right now and I will make a video on it eventually. So I think that's good that this is coming to PC and giving people a new lease on life on Returnal because again, you should play Returnal and many people are unable to because apparently the PS5 is still like extremely rare and now even if it's not rare people can't afford it so at least the Returnal is coming to PC and you can then like fire up your gaming PC and play the game so yeah that's good that's good fully support that other than that the next game worth talking about I think are the fighting games the two big fighting games let's start with Street Fighter 6 coming in June, which people got pissed about, which is weird because there was a release on Twitter which said uh, 2, 6, 23 for Street Fighter 6. And people were wondering whether it's February or um, June. And it's June, which the only thing that's like got people concerned is that it's very close to EVO. EVO is like end of July usually. Um, but hey, whatever, like a ton of people who actually play the game seriously are going to have a lot of early access time. And I do imagine there will be a more sort of expansive beta for Street Fighter 6 before it's released. 
Uh, the thing is, I didn't get into the first closed beta. I tried, but there were so many people trying to sign up and register that the website was down while I was trying. And the second time, it looked like my submission went through, but I never received the beta code, which is, you know, completely fair. So yeah, June 2nd for Street Fighter five, 6. I, I need to... <laughs> I'm like so used to saying Street Fighter 5 that it's going to take a little bit to get used to. Uh, Street Fighter 6, I am very, very hyped for this game. This is actually looking fantastic. And I honestly think that Capcom currently, aside from FromSoft, are one of the best AAA developers out there because they actually managed to release their games in a complete state without any sort of major glitches and all that. And they actually seem to be listening to player feedback now. Capcom didn't used to do that at all. I mean, Street Fighter V was a mess for a long time. But the past couple of years, ever since I think the turning point was when they released Resident Evil 7, that seemed to be like the big thing that uh, changed the company. Ever since then, they have been really good and they implement good changes. They listen to player feedback and it looks like Street Fighter 6 basically has everything that people wanted or people complained about in Street Fighter 5. I and mean, the thing you have to understand about fighting games if you're not really into that sort of scene is that people will always bitch about the gameplay. No matter what they do with the gameplay, people are going to bitch about it. And the other thing about fighting games is that people always look back fondly at the previous game. So I'm telling you right now, when Street Fighter VI releases, people are going to be like, oh yeah, this is trash, this is OP, why is this like this? In Street Fighter V, this was so much better. And when Street Fighter V came out, they were like, what the fuck is this V reversal, V triggers, all that? Bring back Street Fighter IV. Like, that was much better with focus attack, dash canceling, and one frame links. Yeah, that's way better. Uh, so I'm sure people are going to complain, but right now this is looking good and people are not having like really big reservation. Every, everybody who's played the game uh, really liked it. And with the trailer, of course, we have gotten the announcement of some new characters. Uh, DJ is back. Uh, I kind of thought that. I was like, I, they're probably going to bring DJ back, even though he's sort of that weird thing where he's like, he's a classic character. But I feel like he's nowhere near as popular as basically the rest of the classic roster. But he looks cool. I'm interested in how he will play because normally he's like a guile type. You know, he throws projectiles. And in his gameplay, he looked more up-close brawler-ish. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. We had the two new characters, Manon. Uh, she's the French ballet lady, right? It looks really interesting, actually. Uh, she looks grapply. Um... I have a feeling, when I was looking at her gameplay, I feel like she's going to be the uh, the Sea Viper slash Laura of this game. You know, all the Street Fighters have like one of these characters that's kind of grapply, really aggressive, and focuses on sort of this like mix-up moveset. I feel like Manon is going to be that, um, just a sneaking suspicion. And Marissa, who's sort of the big brawler, she looks actually really interesting. But I'm going to be honest with you, I am a little bit sad that they didn't show my man Zangief. Because honestly, I kind of want to go all in on the Zangief train when Street Fighter 6 releases. Because Zangief is so cool. I really like Zangief in 5 as well. And I struggle with him. I'm not good at Zangief at all. But I feel like with 6, I'm going to be scooping up these fools and SPDing them all day. Because uh, that's always fun to do. Um, and then of course JP, who... From the trailer itself is looking like the main villain, um, which is good that they're moving away from the M. Bison slash Urian. They're sort of like the two big main villains and actually introducing someone new. Uh, his gameplay looks interesting as well. Apparently, from what people are saying, what he can do is he can put down these like traps across the screen and he can choose to teleport to these or use them to attack, uh, which is going to be a very unique playstyle for a Street Fighter V character. I keep saying it, a Street Fighter character. And I, this is one thing that I'm also really noticing with Street Fighter VI is that they're actually bringing in some new gameplay styles. Um, and yeah, that's good. More trap characters, 
you know, you have characters that can lay down stuff on the ground, you know, really taking everything they've learned from five and all the DLC characters and implementing those. But man, please, Capcom, please show a Zangief trailer. I, ju I just want to see my man Zangief in action because there's some like leaked concept art for him and he looks absolutely badass. So yeah, I kind of want that. And of course, speaking of Tekken, I mean, speaking of fighting games, Tekken 8. Um, Tekken 8, I mean, it's looking good. Uh, uh, they're, again, they're saying so this was a gameplay trailer, but this was not. Again, you saw a few seconds of gameplay, and it looks like Tekken. Um, it pretty much looks like beefed up Tekken. The graphics actually look very good, which Tekken has always been a little bit clunky and arcadey. It's a part of its charm. And they're like really bringing this game into uh, AAA territory there because Tekken 7 is incredibly popular in terms of how Tekkens go because that that is a niche fighting game. But Tekken 7 is hype enough that um, it got sort of mainstream attention as far as as mainstream as a fighting game can get. Uh, but the thing about Tekken is, and Tekken 7 in particular, I tried, man, I tried getting into it, but it is so incredibly complex. I think Tekken is in a tough spot in terms of as fighting games go. They even talked about this in Tekken 8. There's going to be a new heat system, I think they're calling it, which is meant to uh, encourage aggressiveness. And people freaked out about it because they're like, I think somebody, maybe it was Harada made a comment that, um, like it's not fun to watch when someone is able to block everything and people were already freaking out which no one has even had a second with the game but anyways that's besides the point uh what i wanted to get to what was i trying to get to oh yeah the tekken is a tough spot is in a tough spot because it is built so much on legacy skills that it's just like difficult to explain like if you know how to play if you learned a character in like Tekken 1 and one or 2 or even 2 or 3 or something, you can pretty much play that character and have all of your knowledge, knowledge transfer over to the new games because Tekken does this thing where they just keep expanding character move lists and you know every character has like a hundred moves and it's absolutely crazy. And conversely because of that it's very very difficult to, for a new player to get into uh, Tekken because again someone with legacy skill is going to just absolutely demolish you if you don't just go like absolute goblin mode and practice so much and I think that was my issue with Tekken that uh, it's really really difficult to get a grasp on that game because um, again you fight against an opponent who's also new and they've you know just like picked movesets randomly from the 100 plus moves and they're like doing shit you've never even seen and no professional uses it. So you can't even get a gauge on what the move is. And then you just get caught. I feel like that, that is a very noob destroying game. But at the same time, Tekken does have an advantage of being a very fun button mashy game. I feel like you can just have a lot of fun with it as it was in the arcades where you just go up to the Tekken cabinet and mash buttons and see how far you can get. But I think it's, Tekken is, is having trouble um, with sort of attracting new players because, again, once you get to a certain level, you're going to get absolutely demolished and the game is very overwhelming. So they're doing something. They're doing something with this new mechanic um, and we'll see how it turns out. I completely understand both sentiments because it's a really difficult balance with fighting games already that you need to balance out it being accessible but also not to drive away your old player base. You don't want to have a situation where the current player base and the pros who have been around for a long time leave because it's too easy for someone new to get like cheap wins. So yeah, and with that compounded with all of the usual tech and stuff, man, they're not in a good, pl good place. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Uh, that is for sure. So we'll see how that turns out. I think there was no concrete release um, on the game itself other than 2023. But yeah, Tekken does need it. I mean, I mean, 7 has been around for a long time, so I think it's time for an update. 
And honestly, the final game I wanted to cover, a personal favorite of mine, is going to be the new Warhammer 40k game, Space Marine 2. If you guys don't know, Space Marine, Warhammer 40k Space Marine is a wonderful third-person shooter. A really, really, really good one. Uh, I think it released in... Fuck, it was a long time ago. Like 2012, I think. Anyways, the game is absolutely fantastic. It's like... (laughs) <laughs> without it being a cringe comparison. It's like the Bloodborne of shooters in that the game really encourages you to be aggressive. I mean, the only way to get, like, one of the ways to get your health and shields back in that game is to get, like, glory kills on the enemy. So that forces you always to be aggressive and go in. It really did, like, the that aesthetic that came back with, like, Doom 2016 of it being a fast-paced, aggressive shooter instead of the trend of, like, you know, sit-behind-cover shooter. Space Marine really pioneered that. And it was a great game. I mean, the story was boring as fuck and basic, but it's Warhammer. You're not exactly looking for uh, Shakespeare with Warhammer. It's like a big dude in armor, uh, in blue armor, shooting up orcs or shooting up, I guess, Tyranids in this case are going to be the enemy, and that's pretty much all you need. As long as the game is solid, I will be happy. Really looking forward to uh, this game. Plus, I gotta say, the multiplayer for the first Space Marine game was very underrated. It was a lot of fun. So I'm hoping they bring back the multiplayer, and it's going to be sick, because, yeah, I had a lot of fun on the first game's multiplayer. Really good, really good. Cool. And I think other than that, there were a ton more announcements that Hellboy video game adaptation is looking good. Um, Yeah, that's about it. A lot of usual Genshin Impact won one of the awards which people freaked out about. I, uh, that game, man, I feel like, I feel like you've got to be like a real pervert to play that game always, but hey, Genshin Impact is really popular, but it's looking a little bit sus in my view, but hey, maybe it's because I haven't tried it. Anyways, that I think wraps up my little speech here. Um, I guess you can call this a podcast, but it's not really that. Um, I just wanted to get my thoughts out on here because, yeah, this is actually good. And I think this 2023 year is looking very good in terms of gaming, if all of these actually release on time <clears throat> and all of them happen to be good as well. Uh, no really like big live service games looking like other than Diablo 4 which is 100% gonna be bad because it is just it just is Blizzard I mean Blizzard is terrible so I have no hopes for Diablo 4 and I think Suicide Squad killed the Justice League that one maybe is gonna be live service as well I don't know I'm I'm hoping it's an actual game and doesn't just do the the <clears throat> what Gotham Knights did Oh yeah, and Final Fantasy 16. Ah, I haven't been excited about a Final Fantasy game in a long time. Um, except Crisis Core, which is releasing on Tuesday. Anyways, I'm going to start rambling here. Thank you guys very much for watching this little video. If you did enjoy it, as always, make sure to give this a like, comment, subscribe, post notifications, stuff, all the usual. And yeah, I'll catch all of you on another video or on a stream. Peace out, everyone, and goodbye.